your democracies. Thanks very much, Maria. Um, Frank? Yeah. Uh, um, hello, uh, my name is Franciszek Wieczorka. I'm from Belarus. And um, I was always thinking that I'm, um, I was always dreaming to become a poet. But uh, after the first time I, I, I went to prison, it was when I was 18. And uh, I understood that um, I'm not a very good poet, but I'm very good in my, um, in my ideas. Because always when I was in prison, I knew for why I'm there, you know, why I'm imprisoned. Uh, later, uh, being activist, I understood that I can not all, not only be activist and to be active and to go to the street, but also to write about it and to write about people like me. And I started to become journalist. And I, will offer, I was always criticized that, but how you can be a journalist and activist? You know, journalists they should be independent. But uh, suddenly, after many years, I understood that sometimes journalists. They, in authoritarian societies, they are even stronger and they are playing even a more important role than activists. And what happened, now we have in Belarus a lot of journalists and they are repressed much more than uh, activists, you know, because they are spreading information, they are spreading free thought, you know. And uh, now I am arrested and detained by, and persecuted by KGB. Uh, not because of my activism, but because of my articles, you know, and because of fr uh, free free thoughts I distribute. Uh, why I'm telling that? That very important uh, to uh, spread the free word, free thoughts in authoritarian countries, especially now. And uh, we, um, while we are sitting here and discussing that, Russia is actively doing, and they are spreading uh, their propaganda, and they are very united in this propaganda. And for example, Lukashenko and Putin's regime, they are very strong and united by, this, by their anti-democratic values, you know, because they, they know what they want, you know, and they oppose uh, using their propaganda instruments, very, uh, unif they, they spread very unified message. How we can oppose this message? First of all, we have to, uh, we have to be unpredictable, we have to be creative, and we have to make two steps when they make one step. Uh, what I mean? Uh, first of all, new technologies, internet, social networks, and new media. It's now it's a battlefield for uh, freedom and democracy, not only in Belarus, but in all post-Soviet states. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I was always skeptical about uh, how internet activists, they can make changes, they make can make revolutions, they're just uh, internet trolls, they can speak, blah, 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 and no, no activities. But now I understood that uh, the response to hybrid wars can be hybrid campaigns. Uh, we have to unite our activities in real life with activities in internet. People, especially 18, 20, 25 years old, girls and boys, they, they like to participate, and internet give them this possibility, this opportunity. We created a network of groups in Facebook, in Contactia, some Twitter accounts. They count in total 500,000 members who like the page and who are subscribed for our pages. And we started to give them tasks to put the flag or to make a graffiti or organize the action and giving them some awards, some prizes, some, um, uh, some things they will appreciate. But it's not just awards, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, I don't know, the, the PlayStation, you know. We started to give them the symbols. For example, if you will organize in your city the uh, flash mob about rights uh, for, uh, not rights, but for bicycle, uh, bicycle roads in city, just like, no, just like uh, not political action. Uh, if you organize this, everyone will get the presents for us. And you can choose the present. And we uh, started to use these presents like um, uh, always, al also like, um, uh, like an action. We produce, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no problem, no problem. I'm, I will show you. What we, what we learned from Ukraine, you know, that national identity promotion, it sometimes it could be even stronger 
than a political action, than participation in election. We found that Ukrainians, uh, after this war started, they put a focus on uh, Ukrainian language and uh, cultural promotion, and it helps them to be united and to, uh, uh, to oppose, you know, or to, uh, to create some kind of the wall between Russian, Ruski Mir, and their national identity. We copied this idea in Belarus, and we started to make the promotional production, like T-shirts, like cups uh, for, with the ornament of Belarus. And this ornament suddenly uh, became a symbol of protest, you know. So now we, are, uh, we started one year ago to print T-shirts with this symbol. Like, uh, it's just a national, everywhere accessible uh, Belarus pattern. And we started to give them to internet activists. They started to wear it. And everyone who gets this T-shirt obliged to make photo and to post on Instagram. Now, during the year, we distributed more than 20,000 20, of T-shirts, and most of them were distributed not just like a present, but they are being they are sold. Uh, they are being sold, you know, in shops. Entrepreneurs, uh, Belarus entrepreneurs who felt that Belarus culture and things like this can bring the money, they started to also to take part. And what we have now, we have an uh, organization, Arts Hadiba, uh, my organization, who promotes Belarusian culture, and we are fighting against Ruski Mir. We are trying to unite to engage young people. We are financed by ourselves. We stopped to get uh, grants, financial aid from European structures and uh, Polish funds and, 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 uh, and others, and we started to get money by selling what we do. So it's some kind of uh, self-support, you know, we became self-sufficient. And when the person, when the person get the present, which is politically uh, sensitive, uh, when it pay money, pays money for it, it is much more, it has much more worth for this person, you know. And now you can uh, just uh, put this word in a Twitter search and you will find stars, uh, rock stars, actors putting these t-shirts like they are protest against Ruski Mir, and for many of them, it's also protest against uh, Lukashenko's propaganda. And it's very important, uh, and another way, a creative, um, creative ways of protest. In Belarus, like Gary Kasparov today told, uh, about Russia, but in Belarus the same, it's impossible to protest. If you will be against and you will publicly tell about it, you will be put in jail, you will go to exile, or even worse. So uh, you shouldn't protest in classical way, as everybody knows. Go to streets, publish uh, leaflets, put stickers, political. We have to find new, uh, new uh, forms of protest. What we did? We made plastic bags. These plastic bags, uh, it's written here, freedom to ice hockey players. You know, in Belarus, the word freedom, it's like F word. You know, everybody thinks about it, but nobody tells. It's not allowed, <laughs> yes? Uh, so uh, what we did, it's a promotional campaign for Radio Free Europe. We printed 100,000 plastic bags. Uh, freedom, why ice hockey players? It was before ice hockey championship. And if we distribute this message and policemen stopped me and my friends distributing these plastic bags on market, uh, he told freedom, what? You are political activists, go with me. But I told, but it's ice hockey players. You are against ice hockey players? In Belarus, nobody is against. Because ice hockey players, they are national heroes, you know. And our main ice hockey player is Lukashenko. So, um, but we also made uh, plastic bags and stickers. I, freedom to uh, street cleaners, freedom to uh, tractor drivers, freedom to, uh, who else, trachekist, dvor, dvorniki, dvorniki. Uh, to, to, to everyone, you know, just this fun, fun stuff. And uh, when we uh, went to Central Market in Minsk, hundreds of uh, babushkas, uh, old women, uh, just uh, surrounded us. Oh, give me, give me, give more, because halava, you know, it's for free. And um, <laughs> when, when policemen started to, to ask us, you know, to, to take these plastic bags, these babushkas started to defend us. Well, bad guy, keep them alone, you know, they're giving us uh, plastic bags. And, but the interesting thing that after this, all these plastic bags were distributed around all Belarus. And even now, if you come to Minsk, 
you will see everywhere in the city people bringing these plastic bags. You know, and um, that's, that's about form. And about, uh, about the fun. Now, new generation. It's a 21st century, you know. Uh, new generation, it's like to be entertained. Always to be entertained. They do not read long texts. They do not read manifests, political, you know, uh, books. It's very boring for them. That's, that's why probably Belarus opposition is losing all the time, because we are very serious, you know. We shouldn't be serious. We should be able to put our message, our program for future Belarus, you know, in 10 uh, phrases and with a nice picture, of course. Picture is very important. We should be able to write this message in one tweet and, of course, with a nice picture or cartoon. And its example, it's uh, Lavon Volsky, Belarus artist. He made postcards. And these postcards, it illustrates all Soviet uh, holiday celebrations because you know in Soviet times there was a day of uh, Dvorniki, day of uh, uh, Santechniki, I don't know, of everyone, you know. Mech Mech sorry? Any professions. Any professions, yes, yes. And he just make fun of these Soviet traditions, uh, just make fun of all these, all these, you know, holidays like uh, day of mother and you can see uh, here a very, very funny mother, you know. He just make fun, adding some, you know, Western uh, allusions, you know, and it's it's very cool, and it breaks all Soviet stereotypes, this Soviet thinking, this all Soviet world, world, as well as Russian world. It seems very uh, stupid, very. They just make fun of of them, you know. It's uh, so so. Uh, it's cool. It's just cool, and uh, I think it's it's very it's very good. Now, if we think about spread the message, not to. Uh, broadcast our uh, this uh, you know discussion to to young people who will uh, who is living in Minsk now. But it's much more important to make it in a in the style of uh, John Stewart show. You know, give them ten minutes you know per day of fun, very interactive you know entertaining stuff, and they will know all most important news from this show. You know, like like John Stewart. Uh, uh, does you know uh, so satire it breaks a fear and the fear it's a thing which keeps now not just Belarusian society but it keeps all post-soviet countries and first of all it keeps regime of uh, Putin I would like to start with a joke 